Welcome. My name is Amy Defoe. Welcome. We're hearing some more dings people joining us. That is great. Um, like I just said, I'm Amy Defoe. I'm one of the science teachers here at Graduation Alliance. So thanks for joining in today. Um, I'm coming to you from Washington State. I hope wherever you are at, things are good. And um, I heard from a couple students that they're, they're multitasking here. They're doing some science and then working on some other assignments at the same time. That's great. Um, hopefully the session today will be informative to you. We'll get your answers, your questions answered. And um, we'll also go over a topic that I think has been um, causing a little bit of confusion with some students. We're gonna be looking at some biology, some interactions and in systems. So we'll be looking at like photosynthesis and the carbon cycle and cellular respiration and kind of how all of those kind of fit together. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Of course, we've built in time so that we can answer questions that you have on a particular concept or assignments as well. So again, if I'm not your science teacher, no problem. Um, you could have another science teacher here at Graduation Alliance and, and that's great. We're all here to help you. So at the same time, don't feel discouraged or that you can't ask questions or that um, the topics are gonna to be different because we're gonna go over the same course material and of course I'll be able to answer questions for you as well. So a couple things before we get started. Um, as you guys know, you do have the option to turn your sound on or off so you can mute yourself if um, you know you got some outside background distractions going on. Um, that's great, totally acceptable because then of course uh, we're not distracted if we hear stuff going on in the background. Whatever works for you. Um, you can mute yourself, unmute yourself as it goes on. I do love the interaction. I love hearing students answer questions, ask questions, join in the conversation that we're having during this live session. So that's great as well. Um, you also have the option to show your voice. You can turn your video on so that we can see you. If you're not comfortable with that, that's great as well. Um, you can mute that as as well, okay? Um, the other thing is that these sessions are be being recorded. They're being recorded right now. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing because then you can go back to this live session, maybe as you get to an assignment or we talk about something today, if I uh, answer a question that you have, you can come back to it. But also as you're moving through your courses here at Graduation Alliance, you're gonna have this great library of all of these sessions from your teachers and you'll be able to come back to them and view them as your, your courses go on. So, and we know that, you know, life is happening and we've got other responsibilities and sometimes this isn't the best time for us. And so, you know, we record this so that you can see it at another time. So just wanna give you a little bit of a heads up, okay? So, Again, thanks for joining here. Um, today, what we're gonna talk about, like I said, I wanna go over kind of this big unit that we have in biology, and it covers the carbon cycle, photosynthesis, and cellular respiration. And um, throughout the semester in biology, we kind of go over each one of these, and then it tries to, we tie it in together, and we talk about, well, how do they interact? And what happens if, you know, one changes? Um, and so that's what I wanna go over today. And then we'll have a chance to go over some questions that you might have. And, and it doesn't have to be about biology, of course. It could be questions in another science course that you may have or on a different assignment. That's what I'm here for. And then uh, we'll talk about interactions. We're going to talk about first interactions just in life and then also interactions in science. And then we'll come back to this interactions between these three in the carbon cycle, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, okay? And then we'll end with um, any questions, last minute questions that you might have to um, end you on your day and get you going to where you need to be, okay? So that's our agenda for the day. Again, if you have any questions during this as I'm talking away, um, please feel free. Uh, you can stop me, you can just talk out loud, or of course you can type into the chat box and I'll check into that chat box and see if there's anything that comes up as we go through this. Sounds good? Okay, so again, today we're gonna be looking first off here at biology. And um, like I said, a lot of the unit starts off, there's a big chunk that it talks about, you know, these cycles here on earth. And it talks about the carbon cycle, also talks about like the nitrogen cycle. But then we go into, you know, photosynthesis and cell respiration. 
and how do these three um, connect to each other? And so what I did here is I just put up like a quick little Venn diagram. And so you guys probably know Venn diagrams, they're great to show, you know, similarities and differences. So what do they have in common? What makes them different? So have we heard these before? Carbon cycle, cellular respiration, and photosynthesis. Maybe if you're going through biology, you've heard those before. Pull this up. Okay. Can you guys think of anything that they have in common, these three? Well, Carbon cycle. Cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Uh huh. Uh, they each have almost the same, like, they have to have, what is it, water. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sick. I can't even think. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks for joining us. Okay. <laughs> we'll pair through this. Uh, water, I just did the same thing yesterday. Uh, okay. Water and a couple other elements. Um, I want to say carbon dioxide. Um, but. So that's another thing that keeps them in common is they have a lot of the same elements, but they're having to use them in different ways. Like it's almost backwards. It's almost backwards. Oh, I love it how you said that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. So they all have certain characteristics and they all have these needs to make the cycles work. And you talked about water. Yes, water. Some of them need that water and also some of them produce that water. So it's kind of like, um, they have a, like a recipe of what they need, and then they have kind of a byproduct of what they produce. So yeah, good. Okay, so we heard water. Water is a good one. Carbon dioxide, as we think about the carbon cycle, right in there. So yeah, these different types of elements or um, necessities to make the cycles work out. Good. Okay, big one. What we think about when we think about these three carbon cycles, cellular respiration, photosynthesis, and I heard the word in there as well, gases. Gases is a big thing. We're talking about the exchange of these gases and how they can transfer. And um, the big one we'll be talking about is carbon. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing. That was great. Okay, so what I want to do is go through kind of each one of these and just kind of give a little blurb, a little um, highlight or summary about what each one of them, what they are and what they do. And then um, we'll talk about how they're connected. So let's start here with the carbon cycle. And we heard um, elements. So yeah, right there, a little picture of the, of the periodic table of elements there in carbon is number six. So carbon is, when we think about, well, what is carbon? We talk a lot about carbon dioxide, um, but let's talk about specifically just carbon to start with. So carbon is an element, which means it's a, it's a naturally occurring substance that's found here on the earth. Um, it's pure, it's unchanged, we find carbon. Um, it's a basis of life and it's present in organisms, rocks, oceans, and the atmosphere. So if you think about it, your body has carbon, you're made up of carbon in it. Um, we can look at uh, carbon in rocks and actually we can do what a scientist called carbon dating and we can look at how much carbon is in a rock and we can determine the age of it, okay? So it's pretty, pretty important element there. Um, what is the carbon cycle? So we go into, okay, we know what carbon is, substance here on earth, make, makes up everything. So what is the carbon cycle? So the carbon cycle is we kind of break it down into its definition form. We say it's a, the series of processes by which carbon compounds, so we're thinking about these elements, um, are in, interconverted in the environment. So this is looking at a pretty scientific definition. I'm going to summarize that and take it into real words here in a moment, but I wanted to give you the kind of meaty, meaty definition here. So again, the series of processes by which carbon compounds are interconverted in the environment, chiefly involving the incorporation of carbon dioxide into living tissue by photosynthesis and its return to the atmosphere through respiration, the decay of dead organisms, and the burning of fossil fuels. Okay. So lots of big words in there. I know you're probably like, oh my goodness, summarize that for us, Amy. <laughs> so as we look at here in that definition though, 
right there we see photosynthesis and respiration. So respiration and photosynthesis are two parts of the carbon cycle. And so what we're looking at is how carbon um, is changed here on Earth. And they talked about being the change of this carbon dioxide through photosynthesis, respiration, um, the decay of dead animals, and the burning of fossil fuels. So let's look at that in simpler terms, okay? Let me move this over just a little bit more here. Okay, no, oh, I did it. In simpler terms, the carbon cycle is the process in which carbon travels from the atmosphere into organisms in the earth and then back into the atmosphere. So we're looking at kind of the cycle. It's kind of like we talked about with the water cycle, same thing with the carbon cycle. How does carbon move through the earth? It can change and transform, it can be used up, produces a, a waste product or a byproduct. And what we're looking at that is plants. Plants take carbon dioxide from the air and use it to make food. You guys remember how plants make food? What that process is? A producer making their food? It's called photosynthesis. Okay. Uh, animals then eat the food because we're consumers. Humans are animals, think about that. They eat the food and carbon is stored in their bodies and released as CO2 through respiration. Okay. So lots, lots of important stuff happening in that quick little description. Um, as we think about, let's look at this picture here. Okay, so it talked about how um, we have plants. Okay, well, here we got the sunlight. Plants are taking in that carbon dioxide. And plants, again, are able to produce. They're producers. We're going to go into more detail here in just a second. Okay. Um, plants use that carbon dioxide, and then they produce a sugar. Think about foods that we eat. And they also produce oxygen. When you think about ourselves or other organisms, we eat that. So here I'm assuming, oh, is it a sheep or a cow? We've got an, an animal here. And they're going to graze upon. They're going to eat those producers. And then as they eat those producers, they use it up. And then think about it. Right now as I'm talking and I'm breathing and you guys are breathing as well, we're breathing in and then we're respiring out. So when we say exhale, what we're really talking about in science terms is when we are exhaling, we're respiring, meaning we're giving off a waste product, okay? And when we breathe out, what do you, uh, organisms um, like humans, animals, what do we breathe out? What kind of gas do you exhale out? I'm trying to highlight it here. Carbon dioxide. So humans, we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out or we respire out carbon dioxide as a waste product. Okay. So two processes of the carbon cycle are photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Okay, so again, if you think about it, if you take a, like a big umbrella here and you put carbon, the carbon cycle on the top, like right here, two of the different processes that occur in the carbon cycle are photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So they're two parts of the cycle showing how carbon can transform here on Earth. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so going into a little bit more detail about the steps of the carbon cycle. So carbon enters the atmosphere as carbon dioxide from respiration and combustion. When we're talking about respiration, we're talking about, again, um, organisms giving off or their waste product when they use up sugars and create this energy for their bodies to use. They breathe out carbon dioxide. Okay, so humans, we breathe out. We breathe out that carbon dioxide. Same thing with a cow they breathe out carbon dioxide, okay? Combustion, um, we can think of combustion coming from um, the burning of fossil fuels. So as we think about, you know, we're burning gas in our cars, um, factories using coal or oil, that's what we're talking about, combustion. Does burning of those fossil fuels produce carbon dioxide, which goes up into the atmosphere, okay? 
Um, carbon dioxide, here we get to the good part, carbon dioxide is used by a green plant. So producers, organisms that are able to make their own food from um, the sunlight, carbon dioxide, they're able to absorb that CO2 into their cells. We'll get to that here in a second. And that allows them to produce their own food, produce glucose in photo, through photosynthesis. And then we get to back here to our animals. So as you think here, that CO2 absorbed in by plants. Organisms, so the cow, cows, you know, graze on the grass all day long. Grass is a producer. And so they're eating on those plants, passing that carbon compounds in that food chain. So most of the carbon that they consume is exhaled as carbon dioxide that was formed by what we call aerobic respiration. So for an organism to be able to use the sugar from um, the producers, they have to um, go through a process of cellular respiration, which enables them to kind of transform that sugar into a usable energy. And the kind of the waste product is carbon dioxide. And that's what we're talking about when we exhale or respire out, we're getting off that carbon dioxide, we're giving it back into the atmosphere. Another part of the carbon cycle is decomposers. So we think of um, de decomposers, they break down the dead ant organisms and return the carbon in their bodies to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide by respiration. In some conditions, decomposition is blocked. The plant and animal material may then be available as fossil fuel in the future for combustion. So two parts to this one here, that decomposer part. So we talked about organisms all have carbon in our bodies and um, when we die or the organism dies, that carbon is, can be broken down and released by these decomposers. So the decomposers are organisms that kind of feed off of dead material. So that's one way there. Another way is um, this plant and animal material can then be available as fossil fuel. So as we think about fossil fuels, you might see pictures of, you know, like mining going on, oil, digging into the oceans or whatnot. What happens is think of the oceans and all these organisms and as they die, their bodies get kind of pushed into the sand and over time it gets pressurized and pushed and pushed. And because these organisms have carbon in their body that over millions and millions of years, that's how we get these fossil fuels is from the bodies of the carbon that's left over from these organisms that died millions of years ago. A big old process there. Let's go into that. Okay, so we talked steps to this. We talked about here the carbon cycle and the steps to it. And then we go into one of the processes of the carbon cycle, which is photosynthesis. And again, just a little summary here. Photosynthesis, the process by which green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to synthesize. Another word for synthesize is to make synthesize foods from carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis in plants generally involves the green pigment chlorophyll and it generates oxygen as a byproduct. So as we think about it, each one of these kinds of steps and processes needs things, uses them up, and then it produces a waste product. So um, you think about, um, let's think of like a fire. You have a, a campfire or a fire in a fireplace, okay? You need, you know, oxygen and you need fuel. So think of a log and oxygen. You have a fire and as that's being used up to produce heat, we're also producing waste products. So that log is no longer a log anymore and now becomes, you know, the ashes of the log and it gives off gases like carbon dioxide. Same thing happens with photosynthesis and cellular respiration. They need certain things, but they also give off waste products as well, okay? So in photosynthesis, we've got sunlight, kind of the recipe for photosynthesis here is plants or producers, they need sunlight, we need that sun's energy, carbon dioxide, and water. These three, kind of make the recipe for photosynthesis to take place. And it takes place in a special spot in cells, and we'll get to that in just a second. And uh, what that does is it produces 
It's like a chemical reaction takes place and you get glucose, which is another form of sugar, and oxygen. So again, the recipe for photosynthesis to take place. So we get the photosynthesis, the chemical reaction, and then here is the byproduct or the waste product, oxygen and sugar. Okay, so again, for photosynthesis to take place, we have to have producers. And producers are a special type of organisms because if we didn't have producers, we wouldn't be able to live because we wouldn't have food to survive or energy to survive. So producers are organisms that are capable of making their own food using the energy, raw materials, like that carbon dioxide and water in the environments. We also call them autotrophs because they can automatically make their own food. They don't have to go out like us and find um, other things to eat. They're not consumers. Okay. These organ organisms are also called producers and they're the ones that utilize the sun's energy. They're also called photo, photo autotrophs, big one there, because of course photo means light, so they're using that energy from the sun. Plants do photosynthesis, they're also called photo autotrophs, and um, there's also some types of bacteria in I can't hear you anymore. I just came by to see the preliminary report of the release of Gary Brown. I look like Dan Lambert to you. You want the noodle? Read the paper. I was right about the original Gary, wasn't I? As a matter of fact, yeah, that was a lucky guess. Yes, it was. And Miss Richie was right. No drunk with Brown and Gary Biden. Oh, come on, Sergeant. Richie was his friend. No, no drugs, no. The only thing we found were a few Chinese herbs. You know the stuff they use in their folk medicine. Something made that kid go bananas. And then it shattered his brain. Right.
mute there. There we go. Now you should be able to hear me. Sorry about that. Can you guys see me, hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Oh, a little panic mode. Okay, we're back in action. Sorry about that. Thanks you guys for bearing with that and staying with it here. Okay, let's get back to these producers. Okay. Um, so again, we talked about producers be, being the special organisms that are able to um, produce food on their own using sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. Everybody else, other, other organisms that are not producers are what we call heterotrophs. So that would be ourselves. We don't have the option to just say, you know, lay out and absorb the sunlight, breathe in some carbon dioxide, and make our own food. No, we are consumers when we're hungry, when our bodies need energy to keep going. We have to go and, and find food and consume, okay? So we cannot directly use the sun to make food. Instead, we rely on consumers, on, on other organisms that we can consume to fuel our bodies, okay? Um, again, heterotrophs, also called consumers. So we've got producers, which are known as autotrophs. They can automatically make their own food. Consumers, heterotrophs, are the ones that rely on those consumer, on those producers to consume. Okay. So how does photosynth photosynthesis actually take place? What are kind of the necessities for that? And for photosynthesis to take place, we need carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. So as we think about a plant, think of like a leaf, you know, it's absorbing that sunlight into its cells. Um, carbon dioxide is also getting into that plant through little pores that a plant has. Just like, you know, think about our skin, we have pores that absorbs things in and also releases things out. The same thing with a plant. You add in water, and that's what is the three things that are needed for photosynthesis to take place. So carbon dioxide from the air passes through small holes, pores um, in the leaves. These pores in a plant are what we call stomata, if you've ever heard that before. Water is absorbed by the plant, by its roots, and also through those pores in the plant. Passes through vessels, think of like the stem as a pathway for these materials to move. Sunlight is absorbed by a green chemical in the leaves. Now here's the special thing that we haven't gotten to um, as we talk about what it's that green chemical that plant cells have. So it's a little bit different. We're gonna go into, it's called chlorophyll, okay? So another little image to kind of show what this looks like. During photosynthesis, again, it's taking place majorly the major part of it is taking place in the leaves of the plant. So if you think about a plant that's opening up to the sun, you know, we've got this big surface area that's allowing for that sun's energy to be absorbed into the cells. Now, if you think about the parts of a body, parts of a plant, they're all made up of hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of these small cells. And inside these cells of a plant, they have a special structure called chloroplasts. You think about it, in our cells, we don't have chloroplasts because we're not producers. But in each of these chloroplasts, it contains a green chemical that we call chlorophyll. And this is what gives leaves their green color. Um, chlorophyll is what allows the sun's energy to be absorbed by the plants. It's like their special structure that they have. Um, it is here that this energy is then used to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Then oxygen is released from the leaves into the atmosphere. Hydrogen and carbon are used to form that glucose or the food, you think of sugar, for the plants. Some of the glucose is used to provide energy for the growth of that plant, for the development of the plant. Think of, you know, if it produces a fruit or a vegetable, um, the plant gets bigger, the leaves get bigger. Um, the rest is stored in the leaves. I can talk about roots, fruits, later or for later use by plants. You think about roots and fruits and leaves, consumption for consumers. Okay, so this is a little bit fuzzy, but I wanna just kind of show you this idea. If you think about a plant, again, they have these, these structures that make them different in the plant cell called chloroplasts. And inside the chloroplast is again, this chemical that we say is called chlorophyll. This substance, the chemical, again, absorbs that light energy. 
If a plant didn't have chloroplasts, they wouldn't be able to go through photosynthesis. Chlorophyll also is what gives that plant that green color. Okay. So inside the plant cells is where you find chloroplasts, contains that pigment. Okay, so again, looking at photosynthesis, kind of in simple terms, let's write this out kind of in a formula kind of way here. I'm gonna come down to this part here first. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants make their own food using carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. So here's the written form of it, okay? Here's kind of a word equation, carbon dioxide plus water, give it sunlight, it gives us photosynthesis, which then produces glucose and oxygen. So it's like the transformation here. We no longer have carbon dioxide or water, but instead we get glucose and oxygen. In chemical terms, they both mean the same thing, but if we write it out into a, a chemical equation, we need six carbon dioxides plus six water. We get that light energy and it produces, this is carbon six, hydrogen 12. So these are talking about um, molecules of each and oxygen six, this is called glucose. And that's with six oxygens, which is O2. So again, it's the same thing. We're getting glucose and oxygen. So what does photosynthesis produce? Food and oxygen. That glucose is a form of sugar or energy, which gives us food. Okay. The next one though. The next process in, carbon, in the carbon cycle is cellular respiration. And again, they're all relying on each other to work. So we think about photosynthesis, producing food, energy. Cellular respiration is what cells do to break up the sugars into a form that a cell can use as energy. This happens in all forms of life, both in plants and animals. Cellular respiration takes in food and uses it to create ADP. This is a chemical in which the cell can use to um, make the energy, okay? So cellular respiration is the process of breaking up that glucose from a producer into a form that our cells can use in our bodies. Does that make sense? Let me say it again. Okay, so photosynthesis produces that oxygen, but also produces that sugar, that food, then for us to be able to use it, or for a consumer to be able to use that sugar, has to go through cellular respiration. And the cellular respiration takes that glucose and breaks it down into a form that the cells can use. Okay, and the formula for cellular respiration or how that works is we take sugar, we take oxygen, and here's our little arrow here that means we get the chemical reaction, the breakdown, and it then produces carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So again, that glucose, that sugar, food, plus oxygen. So think about yourself, you're eating food, you're breathing in oxygen, your cells are able to go through respiration, which then produces carbon dioxide as we breathe out, water, and then energy. Okay, so we think about, you know, we have to eat to fuel our body. That food, made of glucose, is the energy. Okay, you guys with me so far? I'm gonna look at it. another little diagram of that, go into a little bit more in depth here. So cellular respiration takes place the same way in both plants and animals. Because we talked about plants have to use, they, you know, use that sugar to grow, produce fruits, um, vegetables, you know, leaves. Um, so both plants and animals go through cellular respiration. Cells obtain the products from photosynthesis. So we get that sugar, that glucose. We undergo cellular respiration with the oxygen that we breathe in. Okay. Some cells respire what we say aerobically, meaning using oxygen, while others go through anaerobic respiration without oxygen. I'll talk about that in a second. 
This process involves a set of chemical reactions to convert chemical energy from glucose molecules into ADP. So ADP is the type of energy that our cells can actually use. If we just eat the sugar, it doesn't, it's not in a form that our bodies and our, our cells can use. So that cellular respiration is the process that breaks it down to form ADP, which our cells can then use and fuel us. Okay, so we talked about this oxygen. When oxygen is present, living things respire or breathe under aerobic conditions. You know, it's kind of funny when you think about the word aerobic and then you think about aerobics, we're talking about oxygen. So in the presence of oxygen, cell respiration is quite more efficient and large amounts of ADP or energy is being produced. So when we have the help of oxygen, it's a more efficient process and more energy is being produced. Well, sometimes there's no oxygen available. And this is what we call anaerobic. And in anaerobic respiration, the amount of ADP is produced, that's produced is much more smaller. So it decreases, it's less efficient. And animals, when we are, say, losing or don't have a lot of oxygen available to us, we go into what we call lactic acid fermentation. I'm not gonna go into too much about this, but we produce lactic acid as a byproduct of cellular respiration without oxygen. So it's a waste product of it. Um, in, anaerobic, uh, in an anaerobic environment, the efforts or kind of the production, it can't be sustained for long periods of time because it's not efficient. We need that oxygen. It can happen, but it's not an efficient process. So let's think about this in terms of, you know, athletics and sports and exercise. Um, you think of the long distance runner. They're using aerobic pathways. So they're able to kind of keep it going for longer periods of time. Whereas you think of like a sprinter, you know, it's a short kind of burst and then it's done, okay? So when the presence of oxygen is given in respiration, the process can be much more efficient and it can be carried over over a longer period of time. When there's no oxygen, less energy is kind of produced, a shorter amount of um, power is sustained. Okay, I always think of when I think of aerobics, anaerobic, and aerobic um, respiration and conditions, you know, you think about it when you exercise, you're breathing in more oxygen. You need more oxygen to keep your cells um, producing that energy to keep you going. When you have less oxygen, you know, you can't work as hard. Your performance is kind of decreased. Okay, so how are all of these three related, okay? Again, the carbon cycle shows us how carbon is transformed on Earth. Okay, so it makes a cycle. Carbon can be used, and then carbon can be given off, okay? Two of the processes in that carbon cycle are photosynthesis and respiration, like we just talked about it, okay? So think of this whole entire picture is the carbon cycle. And within the carbon cycle, we have different processes. We have, you know, the combustion giving off CO2. We have organisms respiring. We have organisms going through green plants, producing, going through photosynthesis, okay? So two of the processes of carbon dioxide are, cell are photosynthesis, so plants here producing, using carbon, di carbon dioxide, sunlight, and water to produce a sugar. They also give off CO2, carbon dioxide, and then we think of cellular respiration, that process of taking that um, sugar from a plant, using it up to produce a sugar that our bodies can use as energy, it gives off CO2. Plants taking carbon dioxide, they produce oxygen and sugar. Cellular respiration, we use oxygen and glucose, and it produces ADP, that's that energy that our cells can use, and carbon dioxide. Okay, so they're related. Carbon dioxide is the big picture, the cycle, and then two of the processes are photosynthesis and cellular respiration. You guys good so far? <laughs> 
okay. This comes from um, 8.3.1, changes in ecosystems. And so it kind of just is a little multiple choice kind of check in to see, you know, how did you grasp the information? Um, and I just quickly wanted to go over that. So, so we think about aerobic respiration. Um, this is a true or false question. It says aerobic respiration produces less cellular energy than respiration in an anaerobic environment. So they're asking you the difference between those. And in this particular question, you think about it, aerobic respiration, more oxygen, anaerobic, less oxygen. So this question would be false because aerobic respiration produces more cellular energy. What is the source of energy to derive photosynthesis? Anybody want to share their thoughts on that? What is the source of energy? So photosynthesis, organisms being able to produce. It's the sun. So think about your plants. They need that sun. That's where that energy is coming from. Photosynthesis takes place, two part question, in the, so where does it take place at in the cells of um, a plant? And what does it release? Two part question. So in photosynthesis, it takes place in the chloroplast. That's where that contains that green pigment chlorophyll and it releases oxygen. During cell respiration, energy stored in the chemical bonds of glucose is released as energy in the form of ADP. Okay, this is the type of energy that our cells can use. Aerobic means without oxygen. Is that true or false? True. That is yeah. going to be false, that's right. Yeah, it's false. <laughs> so think about aerobics. You're doing aerobics, you're breathing in more and more and more. Your body needs more oxygen. So this is going to be false. Aerobic means with oxygen. All organisms are made of carbon. True. Yep, that is right. Plants, ourselves, yep, we are all made up of carbon. What gas is released when wood or fossil fuels are burned? Carbon dioxide. You got it. Yep, we've been talking all about carbon dioxide and carbon. Good job. Lactic acid is an example of a byproduct of anaerobic respiration. We briefly touched upon that. It goes in the lesson. It talks a little bit more about this um, lactic acid fermentation. Um, but in anaerobic respiration, when there is no oxygen, so again, anaerobic means no oxygen or limited oxygen, we get lactic acid. So maybe you've ever, um, you know, you've been, you go for a run or you do some exercise or something like that. And you might hear somebody say they're like, they have a cramp or um, kind of a, a pain, like the muscles being worn out. That's what they say is that buildup of lactic acid. Okay, so lactic acid, that is true. It is the byproduct. Let's go here. What gas is produced during cell respiration and used during photosynthesis? So when we breathe out, when we exhale, what are we giving off? And what do plants take in? I want to say carbon dioxide again. You're right. That's right. I'm really getting that carbon dioxide in today, huh? <laughs> That's right. So during cell respiration, um, the gas that we give off as a byproduct is carbon dioxide. And again, during photosynthesis, those plants take that carbon dioxide in. Win-win situation. Fermentation is an anaerobic process. And that is true. Again, anaerobic means no oxygen or less oxygen. And in that process, we get fermentation that takes place. In the lesson, again, it goes a little bit more into that. Uh, both plants and animals respire. Is that true or false? True. That is right. All organisms go through some type of gas exchange. It might be different, you know, as we think about ourselves, we breathe in oxygen, we give off carbon dioxide. Plants, like you said earlier, flip-flopped. 
Nice job. Okay, does anybody have any questions about kind of those three parts, those two parts of the carbon cycle, photosynthesis, but, uh, cellular respiration, or the carbon cycle? No, ma'am. Awesome. Does anybody have any other questions? Something else? You are welcome if you want to talk out loud or if you want to, um, you can use the chat. If you have a question about um, a topic that you're working on, wherever you are in your course, you're stuck. I'm going to go over one um, last piece here. I'm going to go over an assignment that actually talks about interactions and kind of how we piece that together. And then I'll, I'll end with uh, any questions that you might have too as well. So think about that for a moment, okay? And then at the end of the session, I'll open it up to more questions if you have any. Okay, so 8.2.1 is interactions and cycles. And this comes from biology semester two. So it goes along with this whole talking about the carbon cycle, talking about photosynthesis, and talking about cell cellular respiration. And then kind of in the next unit, it pieces all of those in together. And um, I wanna talk about that. But first I wanna talk about what is an interaction? Because interactions can be, you know, it can be um, interaction in the carbon cycle, but it can also be interactions in our daily lives that we have. When I think of an interaction, the actual definition of it, you know, it's kind of one of those, you know, words that you're like, okay, I know what it is, but then how do you explain it to somebody or define it? An interaction is the process by which different things affect each other or change each other. And you can think about that, you know, we can have, you know, an interaction is, is a form of communication. So when we're um, having a conversation with somebody, we're interacting with them because, you know, what one person says in that conversation affects what the other person says. You know, if somebody says, you know, hi, how are you? And you say, um, I'm having a bad day. Well, then, <laughs> you know, you think about their response is going to change based on if you're having a good day or a bad day. Okay, so we have interactions in our daily lives with people. Um, in science, we get interactions in, think of food webs. So here's a little uh, example of a food web. And then as we think about it, we've got producers go through photosynthesis to produce this food that kind of our primary or first level organisms are going to consume. And then we've got you know, secondary consumers up until um, the kind of the top apex consumers of that food chain, food web. If we removed one of these, let's say if we removed the plants, if we removed the producers in this food web, what would happen to the rest of these organisms? Would they be affected? Yeah, they would die. So again, so we're looking at interactions. If we remove one portion, we're changing the rest of it. So if we can't we live without the other. That's right, exactly. We're all interacting, we all have an effect on each other. So if we think about, you know, if we took away the producers, these organisms, all of them, would not be able to live because they rely on, each one of them kind of rely on each other, exactly. Um, same thing when we think of species interactions. Um, the way that organisms kind of live, they interact with each other. Um, you could think of, uh, one type of species interaction is um, communalism. So if you think of a whale and a barnacle, that barnacle can live on the whale. And it's not harming the whale, but that barnacle is being able to kind of survive in that environment. It travels with the whale where the whale goes. Um, it gets food wherever the whale swims to. That barnacle will then kind of use it as an environment, okay? Um, same thing with like a sea anemone and a, a clownfish. You've probably all seen, you know, Finding Nemo. We talk about mutualism. Both of them rely on each other. The clownfish, of course, can get, you know, um, an environment or a place to live around that sea anemone, kind of hidden from predators. And then as well, um, that clownfish is producing, you can say like waste products that allows you know, this uh, sea anemone to get food. So different 
interactions here. Again, showing how everything is connected. Okay? So again, the same thing happens with the carbon cycle. We looked at you know, photosynthesis and we looked at cellular respiration and how you know, they're transforming, they're changing that carbon, using it up or giving it. So if we think about in photosynthesis, photosynthesis uses carbon to produce food and it gives off oxygen. In cellular respiration, we use the oxygen and we give off carbon dioxide. So they're all connected. We need plants to go through photosynthesis to produce that um, oxygen. And of course we can breathe in that oxygen the plants use and we give off carbon dioxide that then the plants use. So it's this continual interaction between those two processes. Pretty cool, I think. The click in, hopefully. Okay, so then we get to this 8.2.1 interactions and cycles, and I get lots of questions about it, because it's like, well, what am I supposed to do here? So let's take a look at it. It says, let's bring what you've learned about the carbon cycle, photosynthesis, and cellular respiration all together and show how they're connected, work together in an ecosystem. So that's what we're doing. Now, what they want you to do is play the role of a carbon atom in an ecosystem. Start with the production, how are you made, and then explain how you transform through different processes. Make sure to include your role in the carbon cycle, photosynthesis, and cell respiration. There's no set length, as long as you can explain the role of carbon in each process. So what they want you to do is simply pretend like you're a carbon atom and just explain what happens as you travel through the carbon cycle, making sure to explain photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Okay, so this comes from a student here as an example. Um, and I think when it comes to this part about, this is why when I talk to my students about this and they say, do I really have to pretend I'm a carbon atom? And I say, no, if you wanna get creative and play that role and make it into a story, I think that's great. You know. The idea here is to give you that option because some people love to do that. They love to write and create stories. And I get other people are gonna look at this and be like, I don't wanna write a story. Can I just explain the carbon cycle? And yes, of course, I think about when I'm thinking of you know, making modifications for students. The idea here is to meet that learning target. Can you explain this carbon cycle? Can you explain how carbon transforms? So again, you can take it as a story or you can take it as explaining the carbon cycle and the processes that go through it. So again, I never want a student to be kind of um, deterred or not want to complete this or unmotivated because they look at this and they say like, oh, I have to write a story. No. If it's better for you to go in and explain those three parts, great. And if it's better for you to remove that creative piece, I'm there with you, as long as you're meeting that learning target of explaining how um, the carbon cycle works and how carbon changes through photosynthesis and cellular respiration, I am good. So this student wrote, photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and energy from the sun to produce glucose and oxygen, while cellular respiration uses glucose and oxygen to produce carbon and ADP. The carbon cycle exchanges carbon between the atmosphere, vegetation, soils, and organic matter, ocean, and fossil fuels. Carbon made from cellular respiration is cycled from organism to organism. The role humans and animals have in the carbon cycle by converting oxygen and carbon dioxide. Carbon produced by cellular respiration gets constantly converted among different forms and locations. So they kind of flipped it around a little bit, but as you look here, they're meeting the goal here. They're explaining what the carbon cycle is and how carbon is exchanged. Okay. They go in and they talk about photosynthesis, how photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide and energy from the sun to produce glu glucose and oxygen. While then cellular respiration uses that glucose and oxygen that was produced through photosynthesis to produce carbon dioxide in ATP. So again, they're explaining 
what the carbon cycle is, and then they're explaining two processes, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And so they're explaining the products that are used, how carbon dioxide is used in each one of them, or how carbon dioxide is produced. So again, one example of how you can complete that. Any questions on that? And again, as in the directions, they said there was no set length as long as you explained what the carbon cycle is and the two processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration in that kind of relationship of carbon dioxide. So showing how carbon is being used, um, carbon dioxide is being produced. And those two um, processes, again, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So I think it was great in the beginning. Um, we heard a, a student, I think, Lillian, I think it was you that talked about this, which was good. Um, we talked about how photosynthesis, how are they in common? Photosynthesis, cellular respiration, carbon cycle. And you said, well, you know, they're kind of the same. They kind of produce the same types of things, but then it's kind of flip flop And that's exactly true as we think about with photosynthesis, you know, we use carbon dioxide or in photosynthesis, Carbon dioxide is used in energy from the sun, and it produces that glucose and oxygen, while cellular respiration is the opposite. It uses oxygen, and then it gives off carbon dioxide. So you can't have one without the other. They both rely on each other. If we didn't have plants, we wouldn't have oxygen. Does that make sense? We see the connection there the interaction between them. Good, okay, well I hope that kind of clarified this whole, well how do they interconnect? How do they affect each other? Okay, I went in and kind of explained, summarized each one of them again, and then I wanted to make sure to show you how they are connected. Okay, okay. So does anybody have any, here's our last little word before we move on here from today. In this session, does anybody have any, um, any other questions? Awesome. Always great to have students join in on these, get a little bit more information, hopefully, you know, a little bit more understanding on this topic. Anytime you do have questions again, and it comes about, you know, you can come to these live sessions. I know on your dashboards now, they're showing you kind of the schedule of when these sessions are, but again, Please always reach out to your teachers, you know, through chat, through email, whatever your best means is. Please don't get frustrated. We're here to help you out. Sometimes it just takes, you know, your teacher to reword something or show you a different picture for you to get that kind of click or that, uh-huh, oh, that does make sense. So never feel like your questions are, you know, not important or um, you're going to bother your teachers or whatnot. No, again, we're here to help you guys succeed and help you get through these courses and get on to where you want to be. So that's what we are here for. If you do have an idea, maybe next week, because I think about my next live session I'm going to do, if there is um, a concept that you're kind of looking into your course coming up in the next couple days that you think you'd like a little bit more information, I would love to hear your thoughts or suggestions on that. So next week, if there's something that you would like to see, please shoot me a message. I would love to, to get that done for you. Otherwise, um, thanks again for joining. Thanks for your interaction. Good to see your guys' names and your feedback here today. Have a wonderful day and uh, good luck here in science and um, keep it up. We'll see you guys later. <laughs>